What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets radio. We're only a couple days away from Jets Panthers. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get down there. Uh, looking forward to meeting everybody that's going. We have the, uh, we'll probably we'll arrange a meetup on the Saturday night. We have a tailgate on Sunday. If you're not going to Carolina, but you're going to MetLife week two, we will be there as well. So can't wait. A lot of fun. Um, some quick, like just comments on what's going on with the Jets. And the biggest news was the injury report came out, the first one. And to me, the, the guy I was focusing on the most was LaMarcus Joyner, and he's not on the injury report, which is excellent news. So you have May and Joyner back there, you know, to help the very, very young secondary. So that that was my one of my biggest concerns of the injury report. Obviously, Jamison Crowder, there's no update there. But the Jets can offset that offset the loss of Crowder if he cannot play due to COVID because they have a lot of depth at wide receiver. You have Cole, you have Mims, you have Elijah Moore coming back. So for the first time in eons, the Jets can offset a loss of a veteran wide receiver. Um, Makai Becton is back, which is good. LaMichael Pirine, I think, is probably not going to play. Solid's kind of hinted at that. Uh, they'll bring up Josh Adams. And again, the Jets have depth at running back, at wide receiver. So there's not really any concerns. So in terms of injuries as of Thursday, um, it looks good. I hope I'm not jinxing anything. If anything happens, obviously we'll talk about it. Um, Salah seems to hide a lot of things. He doesn't really give a lot of information. But heading into week one, you really don't have to. As the season plays out, the, most teams have to be more forthcoming. Every team does the same stuff. So the other news was the captains. And it's really interesting to see the reactions of the captains. Now, these were voted by the players, not the coaches. And earlier on in the day yesterday, the Dolphins released their captains, and Tua wasn't one of them. And there was a lot of hot takes going back and forth, like how is he not one of them? He should be a leader. Or, you know, they don't want to they don't want to force him into a situation where it's too much. Well, Zach Wilson became a quarterback of the New York Jets. And to me, I think it's excellent. And it speaks volumes to what his work ethic is, his demeanor, his personality. And if you if you look at how he's handled himself since he's been a New York Jet, he has been very, very proactive with his teammates. You saw him at the Islanders games. You always see him, you hear all the reports like, First guy in, last guy out, hanging out in Salah's office, office, asking him about like defenses and how to attack them. And it's all about hard work. And he's, he's trying to, well, he's trying to, it looks like he has earned the respect of his teammates. And that's excellent. Now, listen, I don't think it's been, it was forced upon anybody making the captain. I think it's just this team is starting to believe in him. They see he's working hard. They, they're all buying in and they think he's the leader for their offense. He's going to command the huddle. He knows what's going on. He's going to help run this offense. Secondly, I mean, I don't think there's any pressure. I think the difference between, you know, everybody wants to make comparisons between Zach Wilson and Sam Darnold. I think Zach Wilson's personality, people kind of gravitate to him a little more. He's got a little chip on his shoulder. He's a little feisty. He's got a little swag. And that works, especially in this NFL, where people will rally around you. Like you see it in Josh, with Josh Allen. I'm not comparing Josh Allen and Zach Wilson. I'm saying jo Josh Allen's personality, the way he plays the game, People, they, he, everybody rallies around him and they, they play harder for him. They compete for him. And that's the same thing you want to see out of Zach Wilson and his teammates. So again, a lot remains to be seen. Once you get on the field in live game action, he takes some big hits. Does he pop up? How he handles diversity? That'll gain you either. That'll sink or you'll sink or swim there. I don't know why I can't talk today. Probably because it's early as hell on Thursday morning, but I'm really encouraged. I like everything. I've liked the way Zach Wilson's handled himself on and off the field how he presents himself to the media, to the fans. It's all going well, and it's going to be a roller coaster ride. It's not going to be perfect. There will be highs. I'll, I'll keep saying it. Enjoy the highs. Understand the lows. Like, just understand that this is going to be the process of a rookie quarterback. Um, the other, the other um, captain on offense is Corey Davis, which I think is tremendous. Corey Davis is an excellent player on and off the field, you know, a just driven, responsible, motivated, you know, another like a locker room guy, high character guy. And that's a perfect role model for guys like Elijah Moore, Denzel Mims. You'll get all your position, your skill players. Like he's really good for that position group, and I think it's phenomenal, man. Like this is if you can get all these guys to be on the same page and have that respect and leadership in the locker room, this is how you truly change your culture, which we've been talking about for years. So on defense, C.J. Mosley is, becomes a captain, which is I mean, all pro linebacker. You know, he is he's going to be the motor of this defense. He is ridiculously respected. Hard work guy, you know, high character, high energy, just very intelligent, great communicator. No, no surprise there. The second one was kind of a surprise where it was Foley Fotokasi. Um, but again, this is like a not, you know, he's like a hard, you know, a late round draft pick that has worked his ass off to become a, a sound starter in the NFL. So the, his teammates all respect him for that. And I think they're rewarding him for that, saying, listen, you're, you're motivating us, you're inspiring us, 
You're keeping us together. You're making us all better. And that's what a captain does. A captain doesn't always have to be the best player on a team. It's a guy that's inspiring you, leads you, guides you. That's what you want. You know, so, so there's been some feedback. Why wasn't it Quinton Williams? Why wasn't it Marcus May? Listen, this is what the players want. These are, these are, these are players, these, um, these are guys these players gravitate to. So I don't think they'll put too much stock into it. It's not an indictment on Marcus May. He's going to be a tremendous leader in secondary. We saw it last year. Quinton Williams is a great player coming back off injury who's going to be explosive, could be a Pro Bowl caliber guy caliber guy but if he's not a captain it's not an indictment on them they just said you know what at this time these guys we feel are our leaders are our captains and then the coaching staff will appoint somebody else each week so if Marcus May keeps coming on they'll be like, hey you know what you're our captain this week and you do it and it also gives guys incentives so I don't read too much into this I think it's encouraging the other the uh, special teams captain is Justin Hardy which is no surprise he is as advertised as a tremendous leader you know excellent special teams guy It'll be interesting to see if he gets any snaps a corner. But again, this is all, I, I like all the selections. I think they make sense. I'm not going to overanalyze and give you any hot takes. I just think you can see the direction the team is heading, a lot of positive energy, a lot of, you know, it's just, it's a lot of good momentum. And you, you go into Sunday very excited. Um, I, I, like I said, we'll do our game previews. What's today? Thursday, tomorrow night. We'll break it all down. You know, we'll obviously have game recaps and stuff. But for me personally, when anybody keeps asking about, you know, what do you think as a Jets fan? I am ridiculously excited. I love the direction of this organization. I'm not focusing on wins and losses. I'm focusing on improvement week in and week out, getting this coaching staff acclimated to just a lot of these are first time coaches, getting everybody on the same page, you know, getting just improvement, development, play physical, play competitive, play smart, and see what happens. So, again, thank you guys for watching all our videos. We appreciate it. I probably spoke too fast because I've been drinking a ton of coffee because I'm just, I don't sleep much. And we'll talk to you later.